Hey folks, Dave here. I appreciate you stopping by and I hope everyone's doing well. Several months ago, I had a viewer, GuyNote777, ask if I could uh, show my laser setup uh, in some detail. Uh, so I've been meaning to do it, but hadn't got around to it. When I started looking into it, I also looked at an older video that is related uh, as it's a reference to the extensions that I have on the laser. Uh, but I also found out when I'm looking at that video that the sound quality is so bad that nobody's watching it. I couldn't even understand the original. So, that's my fault. And I'm going to ask you folks, if you see something I post that is so bad you can't watch it, let me know and I'll do something about it. So what I'm going to try to do is answer the viewer mail and fix that video at the same time. And then at some point, I'll just go back and put that old video out of its misery. So uh, let's take a look at the laser. Okay, so here's the laser. It's a uh, X-Tool D1 Pro 40 watt diode laser. And their parent company is MakeBlock. So you can't buy this laser off the shelf. You have to start with a 10 watt or I guess a 20 watt would be fine. But in my case, I had to start with the 10 watt and then order the additional parts, which is the uh, laser head, the gantry, the uh, motherboard. So then I decided to extend it. And that's where that video I mentioned comes into play with the bad audio. My point in that video was that since I started with the 10 watt and I ended up with this configuration with the extension, the 10 watt uh, is sitting in a box minus the front and the rear plate. So the two end pieces you see there, and we'll get a little closer in a minute. Uh, but those two end pieces are the only thing taken off of the original 10 watt and used. Everything else is still wrapped up in the box. And my problem with that, and I'm not knocking X2, they're great lasers, but X2 does not sell those two pieces. So I've got a very expensive laser sitting in a box that I can't use because they don't sell those two pieces. And I just don't want to carve something out of wood and stick them together. So it's something I wish I would have known to start with. I'm not sure it would have changed my mind. Uh, but at least now you know and you can make an informed decision. So the, uh, the enclosure there, I just made that out of uh, cedar fence slats because they're cheap, they're lightweight, and they make the, sm the shop smell really good. And I've just got a few screws in a, some strategic places and I can pop those out and lift the whole thing up and move it out of the way if I need to. So, okay, let's take a closer look. Okay, moving on. This is the front plate that I'm missing from my 10 watt that X-Tool doesn't sell. I'm just making that clear. Okay, so when you upgrade from the 10 or the 20 to the 40, you have to change out the controller, which I called a motherboard earlier, right here. And I'm not touching any contacts there. So you have to do that. And you also have to remember that when you're extending, you have to have a longer cable. And uh, I didn't do that initially, so I had to go back find that longer cable and get it on the way but we got here ah also got a camera on this end so y'all get some of those shots that change out during the uh during the videos it's just an old microsoft camera i dug out of a box okay so that brings us to the rear plate this piece here also a piece that x tool doesn't sell so again it prevents me from using my 10 watt laser to sitting in the box. So I added this fence directly under the camera and had it come out at a 90 degree angle. And I've just got a couple of screws in it. So I if I have to do a longer piece, then I can just pop this out and then pop it right back into place. Here's my overhead camera. It's just an old C270 Logitech webcam. And it should have stopped working years ago, but here we are. And it works pretty good. And here's how it looks in Lightburn. 
camera's positioned directly over the fence that I put on the honeycomb bed. And the old camera works fine. So before you go spend money on one of those fancy cameras, you might want to just drag something out of a box and see if that'll work. It's worth a try anyway. So I've got sewing lights in the top inside the enclosure. And it's just two strips and it's plenty of light. Uh, I didn't even know what sewing lights were until I started building this enclosure and trying to figure out how to put some light in it. Uh, they work really well. Picked them up at Amazon and I'll leave a link down in the description. So I cut a hole in the back right corner to uh, run some cables through. But it has the dual purpose of assisting with the airflow. Because uh, while you want your exhaust fan to create some vacuum to get the smoke out, you don't want too much vacuum. So the full dimensions of the enclosure is 2 feet by 4 feet by 18 inches high. The base under the honeycomb is 3 quarter inch plywood. The back is half inch plywood. Underneath where the sewing lights are, there's about a 10 inch wide piece of half inch plywood. And I mentioned having screws in strategic locations so I could just lift this box off. And I've got these guides made here so I can just slip it in. The screws are on the outside. And that's pretty handy if I have to take something apart. I hope I don't, but in case I do, I'll be ready. For the exhaust, I just, uh, I bought this blower off of Amazon and I'll leave a link to it. Uh, but I ran a dryer vent through the top of the enclosure and then just ran this pipe out of a window where I've got a uh, two inch crack. The exhaust just runs uh, along the wall, nothing fancy. It does the job pretty good. So the exhaust just goes out of a two inch crack on top of this window. That's all the space I had because I've got an AC window unit and I didn't want to get rid of that because it gets pretty hot in here sometime. I made a exchanger so it would spread the exhaust out evenly. And then I added a bathroom fan in that box there uh, because when I record I leave the lid open on the enclosure and sometimes it gets smoky in here. Not too bad but if it does then I kick that on and and pull all that smoke out of the same exchanger. Okay, so I want to thank GuyNote777 for their question and the inspiration for this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope it will allow me to replace that old video that no one could hear anyway. I think there were 118 views on it total, so I apologize to all 118 people that, uh, that clicked on it. And I'll just get rid of it, and hopefully this one will do the trick. So I really appreciate you folks taking time to watch. It does help the channel grow. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll get you an answer. If you have any questions about anything we've got posted, just drop them in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Just check back often for new videos. You folks take care, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.